Here are a couple things you may not know about me. Uncommon Soap comes from the Xbox Live random name generator. My daughter's name is Evie. And look at this thing. That thing is from Pokemon Infinite Fusion, a fan game with over 175,000 different Pokemon combinations. And we're here today to see if we can beat a hardcore randomized Nuzlocke. That means if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead, our level cap is the next leader's ace, no items in battle, and we have to play on set mode. Make sure you like and subscribe, or else you may be getting a visit from Mr. Sir next time you close your eyes. Since this is my first time doing this challenge, we're going to be allowed to capture one pair per route, which effectively means we have two encounters per route. But once that pair is fused, they cannot be unfused, unless the final evolution does not have a custom sprite. I'm also going to be trying to avoid legendaries to make things a bit more challenging, since our opponents can have anything. Starting things off, our starter choices are Machamp, Charizard, and Feraligator. And while I love all of these Pokemon, my first game was Pokemon Red, so I have to choose Charizard. Our first rifle battle against Rando goes surprisingly well, since we have Air Slash, and we take him down in one and move on to our next challenge. Before our rifle battle on 22, we grab a couple of friends, including a Rapidash, Doduo, Exeggutor, Grimer, Crobat, Dugtrio, Sandshrew, and a seal. Like always, I have debug mode on in order to give myself rare candies, repels, and the HM items. But given that we can find any Pokemon on these routes, I also give myself some quick balls to help out with the captures. I also fuse up some of our Pokemon. Battling Rando, he seems to have an affinity for burly boys as we take down his Magnet Choke, but they're both very confused by my tree horse, and we secure the win. In the Secret Garden, we pick up a Poliwag as well as an Anorith. Before taking on Brock, we fuse Sandshrew and Anorith, and I love his googly eyes and then Poliwag and Grimer, and honestly, they were basically made for each other. I love this fusion. There's a quest in Pewter City where you can normally pick up a Pineco, but ours is randomized into Pupitar, hell yeah! Brock believes in a normal hard defense because he doesn't like things too hard or too soft. He likes them just right. And this shy cheerleader is his first Pokemon, but my tree horse is able to make quick work of her and her pom poms in a couple of embers. His eggs got the Goblin King, and I know this thing has Dragon Rage, so we put it to sleep, only to remember it's a Vigoroth as it wakes up immediately. This dude starts moshing, and we lose our first friend of the run already? He never even got the chance to bury his head in the sand. Dash comes out, and we manage to keep him asleep for a few turns. Whittling him down, ultimately, we're able to take the big guy down, securing our first badge. On our way to Mount Moon, we grab a Monferno with Iron Fist, hell yeah, a B-Sharp, and our Magikarp is randomized into a Kangaskhan, which is pretty cool. Nurse Joy is attending to an especially hard Geodude when Brock emerges, wanting to show Joy the correct firmness, and she runs back to the Pokemon Center. In Mount Moon, we grab ourselves a Jolteon as well as a Hypno, and we find out the Team Rocket is up to some bad stuff. We fuse our Charizard with Jolteon, and I'm in love with this guy, and Joltazard is such a cool name. We battle our way through Mount Moon and find out the Team Rocket is attempting a triple fusion. Random! They force the Fossil Guy to battle us to buy time, and why does it have Wonder Guard? At least it's on theme with being a Fossil Pokemon. We swap in Girawag, and since he isn't Bug, he has to be Rock. So we pop some bubbles in his face, taking down this run killer. Team Rocket's fusion machine breaks, and honestly, I'd probably leave the broken machine there too. That stuff has to be wicked heavy. Before our next rival battle, we grab ourselves a Sneasel and a Cloybass. Brando's been working out, and he wants to show us what a little bit of GTL can do for you. Omoclops is his first Pokemon, and it's actually super cool. I love how the rock and the tentacles were worked into the Dusclaw sprite. This would be a little crafty and horror if it wasn't such an adorable shade of teal. A few Thundershocks take him down while he uses his potion. Sandpai goes down, and look at Pseudoterra. He's so happy to be here, and he finally got to be a real tree. We swap and dash, and I predict him being ground correctly, taking him out in one seed bomb. Ferret champ, more like ferret chump. Later, Gator. On 24, we grab ourselves a Dratini, as well as an Ambipom Fusion. Our Sandrith evolves into a slightly larger Sandrith, and you know what else is random? This dude fusing himself with a Pokemon. He realizes his mistake, we help him out, and he gives us some cruise tickets as a reward. Misty loves ghosts in this universe, and she plans on haunting our dreams. A gelatinous cube is her first Pokemon, and we lead with Joltazard. Duskull has so many cool fusions, it's a shame they get worse as he evolves, but we make quick work of our first Pokemon as Miasma Bell comes out to be the second, and I'd like to think he's tipping his hat to us. We trade back and forth with a few embers, and luckily with a little help with some burn damage, we take the big guy down. Before heading into our all-expenses paid cruise that never leaves the dock, we grab a bunch of new friends, grind up, and start mashing stuff together. We fuse Weedle with our Ekans, fully evolving it into this snake with hands. Girawag also grows some hands and puts lovely gloves on for safety. Brando says one word in French to show how random he is, and he sends out a Charsaur, which he'd normally have in this situation, which is actually kind of cool. Sandra shows what those slightly angry googly eyes are capable of, as great magnitude rolls take out his first two Pokemon in one shot. We land a decent hit on the champ, but we need to swap, sending in Dash, who takes him out in one seed bomb. His Majunior doesn't stand a chance, and isn't that the name Piccolo uses at the end of the original Dragon Ball? Surge literally freezes his enemies into paralysis, which actually kind of works for his trash talk, and he sends an 
an Aratar? An Ember does okay damage, but after a Rock Slide, we need to swap into our horse. A Flame Charge brings him into the Deep Red, but so are we. And after wasting his potions, we're able to take it out with a couple of trades. Duchamp comes up next, and are we serious? Knowing we're faster from all the charges, we risk it for the sleep, managing to hold on through an Ice Shard, and getting the Hypnosis off. Swapping into Sanrith, it immediately wakes up, and a Magnitude does a lot less damage than I wanted, Ice Shard hits us really hard as the second one rolls a little bit better. It wastes a turn on Sandstorm and the third one takes it down. His final Pokemon comes in and we swap into Joltizard and seriously underestimate the power of Fury Swipes. But honestly, what else was I going to do? Everyone's so low right now. I'm sorry, buddy. I'll always miss you. I take it down in one magnitude, and I probably should have done that in the first place. And we grab our third badge. On our way to Lavender Town, we grab ourselves some more encounters, including a Metagross? and I'm really sad I can't use any legendaries. Look at this Mewtwo. Before our rifle battle, we teach our goodest boy how to swim, and Luxsharp looks like a Sonic friend of me. Rando is mourning the loss of so many of his Pokemon, and I feel like battling here is kind of disrespectful, and Shellcoth looks exhausted. One Seed Bomb takes him down, and Aegecarp is hilarious. He tries to be scary, but doesn't know how to be. After a charge and a bomb, this guy is Sushi. Giratu, whose chest is way too happy to see us, but he seems to have Zatsu's moveset, so him and Ferrochamp both go down pretty quickly. Team Rocket is interrogating Mr. Fuji in a plot line that makes way more sense in this game, and they take him up Pokemon Tower because they want his Master Ball plans. We, however, mind our own business and move on to Celadon, where the next badge is. We grab a few friends along the way, and I can't believe we get a High Dragon. We fuse it with our Metagross, and this guy has four brains and only three heads. I don't know where the fourth one is, his butt? Why is Erica's gym next to sewer runoff? The smell has to be awful. Anyways, she knows Mr. Fuji and suspects Team Rocket is in the sewers, so we make our way through them and their secret base, ultimately finding the big man himself. And it's up to us to battle him. We put Blase to sleep, and after we throw poop in his face a few times, we get taken down pretty low with Dragon Claw. No one will heal up. We go into Lux Sharp and get the Intimidate off. After charging for some reason, one Iron Head takes him down. Hound Loon comes out next, and a Spark gets the Paralysis. As the second one knocks him out, but we do unfortunately get put to sleep from effects four. Starkle comes out and we continue to nap for a little while, eventually bringing it down with a couple of hits, and this is the easiest Giovanni fight in history. This gym sure is great, it's full of sexy women. After navigating our way through all the aforementioned sexy women, we find Erica, who's been randomized into a flying type trainer, sending out a gigantic Electagot. We decide to go for big boy moves and lock into Outrage, using her potion, then we break through confusion for the KO. Gaspon comes out next, and we smack ourselves a few times, trying to take the big bug down as it continues to just raise its speed. Swapping into Lux Sharp, we somehow outspeed it and take it out with a Spark. Pyro comes out next, and even though it's neutral damage, a Spark hits her for huge damage, and a second one earns us our fourth badge. After heading back through Pokemon Tower, we fuse our Infernape with Cloyster to get this awesome fusion that has no business being this cool. Look at this guy. While fighting our way up Pokemon Tower, one of the possessed ladies has a creepy penguin that rudely okos our poor Lux Sharp. What a tragic loss of life. We get to the top of Pokemon Tower where Mr. Fuji's fine. He tells us as the girl who really likes flute players, he gets us one and we head to Route 12 to impress Janine. While getting ready for Koga, we capture a Vulpix, Tan Mortar, and a Giddick. We next fuse Garvantula with Magmortar for this crazy bug cannon. Next, our gear whirl, grow some legs, and we reverse Uno card it to transform it into the adorable, yet definitely foul smelling, Pollock. After we fuse our Hypno and Weezing into this thing, we get going. Coke's actually Naruto in this randomizer, and this Heracross is even orange and blue. After setting up a nasty pop with Nigel Thornberry, we start smashing through all of his Pokemon with Psybeam, earning us our fifth badge. While fighting through Sifco, Sandrith evolves into basically a brown armadillo, and Rando is waiting for us outside the president's office. And this is honestly the stupidest fight he pulls in the entire game. There's a hostage situation going on, but he wants to fight us instead. But after setting up a sword dance, he uses a move that always does 50% of your current health and goes down without even using a potion. Quagchan comes out, and this is even more hilarious. After tanking his end headbutt, we miss the next two, getting put into the deep red, and we have to switch out. We get hit hard and burnt, so we swap into Cloynape and manage to take him out with a power-up punch. Gravbot goes down in two power-up punches, and Cadtech is adorable, but gets taken out in one thunder punch, and the chump goes down in one as well. Giovanni is harassing the Sylph president because Master Ball production isn't on schedule, so Rando decides to help us take him down, and a double battle begins. Okay, so Pori Menace is probably gonna be just that, and Smukot is adorable and just wants to say hello. I get lucky and two Ice Beams take it out. Smukot takes some serious damage from Beesaur before getting taken out itself. 
We take out Smukon, and I'm regretting how easy this rival battle was now because his second Pokemon immediately gets clowned out, and Rose Farig has become a huge problem just by existing. Another two of Rando's Pokemon go down as my poor bug tank gets taken out in one shot. We had barely just gotten started. I send a hip zing, but miss because of course I do. As Rando's last Pokemon gets taken out, which means it's gonna be a 2v1, and both of those Pokemon are above the level cap. This also allows Rose Rig to set up a nasty plot, and my second Pokemon goes down this battle. I'll always remember you, Tim Curry. I send Vapor 9 out. My water dog just gets buried before it even has a chance to do anything. And I'm assuming this is just gonna be the end of the run at this point. Metagon at least gets one turn up, and I switch into Sandalo but I forget this thing already used Hydro Pump once and I get taken out immediately. You've been with me since the beginning. May you rest in peace, my friend. Meta gets sent back in just to die. And I guess I was right. That fourth brain was up his butt this entire time. This is it, down to my last Pokemon, which I'm now actually seeing is on level 46. So I guess this entire thing's illegal now. I'm pretty sure this guy only has Golduck moves. So two Thunder Punches and a Power Up Punch are enough to take down this Platypus. But there's been so much death. I don't know how we're gonna come back from this. I evolved my Phoebus I caught earlier and fused it with Meganium, and this thing is beautiful. Up next is Typhlosion with Flygon, and he just looks like a skinny Typhlosion that's jumping for joy. Tangle Growth and Magnezone is pretty cool though. I love this Techno-Organic monster. Sabrina has had electric power since she was a child, and she's going to shock us with her abilities. Zewarb is her first Pokemon, and after a couple Earth Hours, I'm realizing I forgot to heal up, but we're still able to take it down without an issue. Shuros is her second Pokemon, and an Earth Power basically does nothing. A Rock Slide on her side does good damage. As we return with one of our own, she switches into Silphtink, who honestly, I'm a little afraid of. Swapping into Magnagrowth, two Flash Cannons, take it out, and another two, finish off Shuros. Her last Pokemon, Lapzone, does decent damage to us with the Discharge, but we're able to make quick work of her, earning us our sixth badge. On our way to Cinnabar Island, we grab a bunch of encounters, but this swimmer is a giant jerk and a stone edge knocks out our favorite silly tree. You are the best of us, Dash. I already miss your smile. Blaine ignores the rules of the randomizer and remains a fire trainer, but this uh, Pika Vesta is uh, something. It goes down in one earth power and Mamora and his giant head go down in two. Dante is next, and this woolly mammoth thing is so cool, and Earth Power does huge damage. And after confusing us, he switches into Dark Knight, who's actually way cuter than I anticipated for a Dark Rye fusion. We break through confusion to do some good damage with an Earth Power. A faint attack puts us below 50%, and we get the KO. After healing back up, we end the fight in two, earning us our seventh badge. Team Rocket steals this guy's boat and heads for Mount Mortar, so we swim after them to get it back and stop their plans for the fourth time. We grab a few friends along the way, make our way through Mount Ember, where Team Rocket's plan is about to come to fruition. Giovanni has captured all three legendary birds, and he plans to fuse them into one super bird, capable of having three attacks in one turn. Who could possibly stop him with such an overwhelming number of birds? Uh, hopefully us. Knowing the assault this thing is capable of, I set up a light screen as I get smacked with an air slash while the other two buff up. A Surf does okay damage, but an Ancient Power gives him the Omni Boost and officially like F you dude, what the hell? Freeze Dry and an Air Slash knock out our beautiful flower. Thank you for your sacrifice, my darling. I send out Typhon who tanks two Ancient Powers as a Rock Slide fails to get the KO because of stupid resistance berries and I miss Zapdos altogether? They keep slinging rocks at us, so I just throw them back at them and this time without their berries, one and three go down and somehow I miss Zapdos again. I need to switch, so I send in Magna Growth, who can resist Zapdos' the attack. And after like 15 rounds back and forth, we need to switch into Pollock. And for some reason, allow him and Cloynape to go down. Both are huge losses. Pollock has been with us since the beginning, and Cloynape is so cool! Look at this thing! Why is he so cool? Running out of options, we send Typhon back in, and thank God for Flygon's special defense, because we barely hold on after a discharge and finish it off, thwarting Team Rocket's plan Again, after the battle, the birds defuse and scatter. Giovanni disbands Team Rocket, leaving alone. And now we have to rebuild. First thing we do is fuse an Electro with a mill tank for um uh, this. And it's time for us to take on Giovanni for our eighth and final gym badge. Blasting comes out against our Rosario, and we switch into this Spunk Ball. After getting Giovanni to use all three of his full restores, we just keep on using Spark until he swaps into Spear Muku, and then we get the Para. Nice. After drinking some Leg Juice, we get hit pretty decent with the Dark Pulse, and we finish it off with a Spark, but Innards out takes us a little below half. 
We take another slurp and then slam this bug three times for the KO. And then we just go to town on his team, including Gas Hoger, who is wicked cool, by the way. And we earn our final badge. Before making our way to the Elite Four, we have to battle Rando one more time. He sends out Bertle, who's adorable. And we take him down in a flurry of leaves. Snub picks haunts my nightmares. So we send him a load to make his come true and take him down after a few rounds. Where is this dude getting all these cool Pokemon? Ryford hits us below half and I find out he's ground, not water. So I send Rosario back in, taking him down in one Mega Drain. After setting up a Calm Mine, we start draining him after three turns, Dewu goes down. Ferrochamp comes out, but per usual, all those muscles don't do anything to help him out, taking him down in two. His final Pokemon is Swam Slash, and unsure of which version of it, we find out that he's Ghost. So after exchanging a few turns back and forth, his final Pokemon is KO'd, and we win the match. Once we get to Indigo Plateau, we start doing some theory crafting and make some adjustments to our team, but finally land on the following before heading in to face the Elite Four. First up is Rosario, holding a Miracle Seed with Mega Drain, Aura Sphere, Dragon Pulse, and Calm Mind. Typhon is wearing a Rocky Helmet with Flamethrower, Earth Power, Dragon Breath, and Rock Slide. Parasol has a Quick Claw with Psycho Cut, Night Slash, Recover, and Swords Dance. Agarus holding Leftovers with Sacred Sword, Iron Head, Dragon Claw, and Dragon Dance. Snorkew also with Leftovers with Crunch, Play Rough, High Horsepower, and Rest. And finally, Glystar with Earthquake, Crunch, Thunderfang, and Swords Dance. He has the Black Sludge on right now, but I'm about to remember that that's not how Poison Heal works. Our first challenge is Lorelei, who's been randomized into a Dragon Trainer. She sends out Argon, and we send out Glystar. We set up a Swords Dance, and he just hazes it away. And here's where I remember how Poison Heal works, and just start biting him instead. Dragonite comes out next, and wait a minute, that sprite's not right. We swap into Snorkew, and after forcing her to use all of her full restores, she swaps into Drakarb, sacrificing it in one. Jin Knight stands no chance against our sleepy sack of potatoes, and neither does her Laffity. And one last play rough knocks out the faux Dragonite for our first victory. Next up is Bruno, who's a bug trainer, and that's gotta be ironic on some level. A Rhygon comes out against Glystar. We set up a Swords Dance and proceed to one-shot the entirety of Bruno's very, very sad, sad team. And now that I think of it, the BST of Bruno's normal team isn't that great either. Oh, oh well. Agatha is our next challenge, and she's a fighting type trainer. She sends out Typh Bloom against our Tygon, and Earth Power does good damage, forcing both of her full restores after going down in two more hits. Geolite is so happy to have legs, but an Earthquake breaks both of those legs and we get another KO. Manila is honestly a little creepy and we dispatch of him pretty quickly, only for Rain Ape to come in next, and this thing is like really cool. After we trade back and forth for a few rounds, a couple of Earth Powers do the trick, leaving only her ace, Hitmonvire, who's got fierce hands. After taking a big hit from him, two attacks from us are all we need to take her last Pokemon down. We've been pretty lucky this time making it to Lance, who's also a fighting trainer, and he immediately rips off his cape to reveal this oily Garrett champ. And we go for a dragon breath and manage to get the paralysis off. Lance responds by doing what he does best, Hyper Beam! After getting him to use both of his full resource, we knock him down to about half, and after taking two naval buffets, we need to swap ourselves out. Two psycho cuts are enough to take him down, and I don't know what in the world I was thinking with a dark normal Pokemon, and this Heracross takes me out immediately with close combat. Snorkew comes in, and we do big damage with Play Rough, only to take him out in the second turn. But now we're at about half. I honestly probably should have made this thing ghost, not fairy. Puku Cross is the next Pokemon. We managed to take it down in one shot, but unfortunately for us, he has entered out and our little sad sack goes down. I sent Typhon in against Mr. Key and this stupid thing has outrage. I'm outraged. Three Pokemon down, all because of stupid plays. This is the bird fight all over again. Gliscar comes out with an earthquake and it takes him down. Polyferno is his last Pokemon who does a huge amount of damage to us, but at least we're able to take it down without losing another Pokemon. And now it's all come to this, our big battle against Rando to decide who is the undisputed champion of the Kanto region. And he sends out a fricking smear too. Come on, but at least his Pokemon is wicked cool looking. He uses Guard Swap as we set up a sword stance and he wastes his next turn sketching our sword stance and we take him down in one crunch. Ninario is his next Pokemon and an x Scissor does huge damage to us, but that slender Lucario body means one thing. He's steel and an EQ. KOs. Ferrochamp is the next Pokemon, and I know that I basically need to just try to sweep with Glyscar, so we go for a Thunderfang, but it barely holds on, and then a Dynamic Punch takes us out. Rosario comes out, and two Mega Drains are enough to KO the big guy. Zekwile hits us for decent damage as we set up two Combines, and I guessed wrong about his typing as an Aura Sphere does basically nothing, and we are hit deep into the red. A couple of Mega Drains help us hold on for a bit longer, but ultimately that Aura Sphere call sealed our fate. 
and we're down to our last Pokemon. This dragon with way too many swords dances with him a few times before taking some chip damage from Rando. And after two, we Oko with Iron Head. Tentasur gets slammed into the red with a Dragon Claw, but after healing up twice, we're able to take it down pretty easily. His last Pokemon is a Kingross, and this thing is awesome! It's like a shiny Mega Megagross, but a dragon, and two claws take him out, ending the battle, and after 17 deaths this run, this nail biter is over! And we have been crowned the Pokemon League Champion. And that is how I beat a hardcore randomized Nuzlocke of Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, you should consider subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, all that fun stuff. I've really enjoyed making these videos the last few weeks, and I'm hoping the support can keep up as I continue. Let me know what some of your favorites are in the comments down below, and let me know if you have any ideas for runs you'd like me to do. I have a loose schedule, but I'm, I'm open to ideas. But anyways, catch you next time. See ya.